The Northern Lights is one of the most beautiful things you can see in the night sky, but did you know you don't have to travel too far to see them, because you can see them right here in Scotland. They can however be tricky to locate and photograph, so here's a few tips and tricks to help you. First of all, what are the Northern Lights, or to give them their full name, Aurora Borealis? The Northern Lights are formed when particles from the sun smash into Earth's atmosphere, and when they do that, they excite our chemicals and glow lovely colours, usually green. So when can we see the Northern Lights? We can only really see the Northern Lights when it's dark, so the summer months is no good for the Northern Lights because it's really really bright and you just can't see many stars so it gets faded out. So you'd really need the winter months from about late August to early May, that's the darkest months, that's the best time. Another factor to see in the Northern Lights is obviously the solar activity. As I said, they all originate from the sun, so you need high solar activity for the Northern Lights to be uh, active over Scotland. And you can track the solar activity with um, loads of mobile apps and websites nowadays. Thankfully the sun's getting pretty active just now, and over the next three or four years it's going to get even more active as we come into a thing called Solar Maximum, which is just an 11 year cycle that the sun goes through. It gets pretty active and then it dies down a wee bit. So thankfully we're going in the right direction and hopefully we'll get some really good shows over Scotland this whole year. Another factor you need for Northern Lights is obviously clear skies. The Northern Lights originates pretty much on the edge of space, edge of our atmosphere, so you really need the clear skies, otherwise the cloud will obscure your view. Make sure you have a good, clear, low down horizon because in Scotland they are on pretty much on the horizon because you're looking towards the Arctic latitudes from where they originate. Sometimes on very rare occasions when it's really high activity they can get pretty high in the night sky but for most shows they're pretty low down on the horizon so make sure you've got a nice clean open horizon to the north. A field or the top of a mountain is absolutely perfect. On good activity even England and Wales can get a good view of the Northern Lights but obviously for them it'll be even closer to the horizon just because they're that wee bit further south. Make sure you do have little light pollution in that direction because the light pollution obviously will obscure the lights as well. So if everything lines up, you've got clear skies and good solar activity, what does the Northern Lights look like? So at the start of the night, hopefully you'd see a nice green arc on the horizon, and when the activity really gets going, it should start rising in the night sky. And when that arc reaches at its maximum height in the night sky, it'll hopefully just burst, and that's when you'll see the little curtains and the shapes, and hopefully the aurora moving and dancing to the naked eye. The colour of the Northern Lights is mainly like a grey whitey colour, just for the most show, but when it gets active and when it starts dancing, then you'll see the greens and hopefully sometimes even the purples. So how do you photograph the aurora? Well nowadays you can take really good pictures on your phone, uh, but if you get a DSLR or mirrorless camera, that'll make the aurora really pop. The camera that you choose to capture the aurora will pick up way more colour than you can see with the naked eye. Sometimes when you take pictures you'll see all these purples and reds that you've got no chance seeing with the naked eye. So if you're wanting to get really fantastic images, DSLR mirrorless will pick up all these lovely details that you just can't see with the naked eye. So yes, as sometimes people say, pictures from cameras do look more green than you do see with the naked eye, just because the camera is getting exposed to the aurora's light for longer than your eyes are. So it's going to capture way more green that you can see. So for the camera settings that you'll need, you need your exposure to be between 10 and 20 seconds. This will allow enough light into your sensor for it to create an image. You want your camera's light sensitivity, which is known as an ISO. You want that to be between 1000 and 2000, and this will, yet again, allow just enough light in to make a perfect image. You also need a fast lens, and what do I mean by a fast lens? I mean a lens that's pretty much got a wide open aperture, which is basically just the hole that the light comes through and hits your sensor. So you want a really fast lens, anywhere between f1.4 and f2.8 is fantastic. Settings always vary because of the conditions that you're in, so say if there's a bright moon or light pollution, you might want to take the ISO down, um, or if it's really really dark you might want to crank it up a wee bit. It's totally dependent on you and that's really the skill of nighttime photography. You have to match your settings compared to what conditions you're in. So how wide do you want your lens to be? Well if you're capturing that arc on the horizon or that's quite a big aurora display uh, you want really wide angle lenses, anything between 10 and 20 millimeters. But if it's quite a faint show or you just want a nice pillar that takes up most of the image you can go with around about the 35 to 50 millimeter, and that zooms into the detail really nicely. So that's really all there is to see the Northern Lights in Scotland. Just have clear skies, have good solar activity and look north, that's where the goal will be. So best of luck and let's hope for a great aurora hunting year and hopefully you learn something from these tips and tricks and hopefully we see a really good display over our beautiful country of Scotland.